Hey my loves, I'm Shelly, also known as Letters by Shells, and welcome to my channel. So if you are new here, I'm an artist with an emphasis in hand lettering, watercolors, digital art, and DIY projects. So I'm so happy that you're here. And my overall goal in creating art is just to bring love and positivity and create things that I wish existed in the world, along with things that bring me joy. So for today, I thought it'd be super fun to show my process on creating seamless patterns using the Procreate app. So I cannot wait to show you all the process and just kind of like what goes into making patterns like my sketch process, elements that I want to incorporate and things like that. So I hope you enjoy this tutorial and I hope that it inspires you to create something super fun. So let's do this. <laughs> Before I get into the Procreate tutorial, I thought it'd be really fun to show my sketch process first. So here are a couple of the elements that I drew out. And honestly, making patterns can be kind of challenging because then I feel like you can include so many elements. But for this one, I went ahead and thought about elements that make me happy and also like my favorite emojis. So like a leaf emoji, flower. So after I have a few illustrations that I would like to incorporate into the pattern, then I'll go ahead and start composing different versions of them. You'll see that the first one, I went ahead and only included stars, flowers, leaves, and the abstract element, while the other ones I included the smiley face, flower, and leaf. The versions that I drew out, it's not going to be like a for sure thing where I'll take one of them for the pattern design, but I just wanted to go ahead and visually see my options. And this helps me prepare when getting into the pattern making process. So now getting into the pattern making process on the Procreate app. When you are making a new canvas, make sure that it's a square. The canvas that I used for this one is 3000 by 3000 pixels. And as I'm getting started to make the pattern, I find it helpful just to pick out four colors and get my color palette ready. This color palette will be done on a separate layer so that way I can always reference it as I'm making new elements. So when I'm not referencing the color palette, I'll just go ahead and open up the layers tab and just uncheck mark that layer. So after I have my color palette in mind, then I'll go ahead and open up a brand new layer and start drawing the individual element. So first things first, that's super important for the pattern making process is that I wanna make sure that all the illustrations that I draw are within the canvas and that none of the illustrations are super close to the edge or even touching the edge. We wanna make sure everything's just within the canvas. So for the first element, I started with drawing a few flowers and this was all done on a separate layer and I highly recommend drawing all the elements on individual layers. This is going to help you at the very end when we're going to group them all together. And also a note, I went ahead and drew out the outline of the flowers first, then filled them in. And then for the center of the flowers, I went ahead and also did that on a separate layer. So that way I can recolor it and then eventually merge all the layers together. And then for the next process, I'm just going to open a new layer again and start drawing the second illustration, which is going to be a leaf and then a smiley face. So as I'm making this pattern, I'm actually also duplicating a bunch of the illustrations as well. I find it helpful to have all the illustrations on separate layers. You can recolor them really easily, but also copy and paste them easily as well. So during this process, I'm just going to have fun with it and just really think visually, okay, like how I'm going to lay out all of the illustrations and also reference my color palette often. So that way I'm not having the same colored illustrations right next to each other. And to help fill the negative space, as I'm duplicating some of the illustrations, I'm also resizing them. So that way they don't have to be the exact same size as the original drawn illustration. But yeah, this process is super fun, but also can take most of the time just to kind of lay everything out, figure out how much negative space you want in between the illustrations as well. So also just note that the bigger the illustrations, that's going to be reflected when we create that seamless pattern. So the illustrations that I drew, they're kind of small and that's going to be reflected on the seamless pattern. So my illustrations will also look small when the pattern is finished. So this next step is totally optional, but what helps me to kind of figure out how many illustrations I have of each illustration is that I'm going to open up my layers tab and highlight all of the individual paired illustrations. So I'm going to group the smiley faces, group the leaf illustration, and then group the flower illustration as well. And we're going to eventually merge all of the groups together to flatten the layer. And as I'm grouping the elements, I'm able to easily move around some of the illustrations a lot easier, duplicate them and things like that. I think it just kind of helps me stay organized. 
So for one of the last process, I wanted to make sure I also filled all of the negative space with smaller elements. So I went ahead and opened up a brand new layer and now filling the negative space that I see with stars and intentionally picked a smaller illustration. That way it doesn't take away the focus of the bigger elements that I have throughout the pattern. It just helps complement the overall pattern. So after all of the illustrations are drawn out, I'm now going to open up my layers tab and start flattening all of the illustrations onto one layer. So all of the flower illustrations will be on a separate layer, but it will be no longer grouped. And then the leaf illustration will be on another layer. So after all of the layers are flattened, I'm now going to highlight all of the layers and group them all together. And just as a safety, I like to actually duplicate this group because I want to make sure if in the future I want to do the patterns over again or change them up, I don't have to start all over again. So I'll go ahead and duplicate this and then on the right hand side, just uncheck mark that checkbox to hide that layer. After all of your illustrations are created, we want to make sure we can add some guidelines to help with the pattern making process. So tap on the wrench symbol on the left hand side, it's going to be your actions tab, and then tap on canvas. And then we're going to tap on the drawing guide and underneath it tap on edit drawing guide. So to edit the drawing guide at the very bottom where it says grid size, we're just going to increase it all the way to the max. So now you should see that there are four boxes. And for some reason, if your guidelines are not appearing, make sure to to adjust the color using the color bar at the top. And then after you're done, tap on done. So I'm gonna go ahead, open up the layers tab and open up a brand new layer, but I'm gonna make sure that this layer is going to be underneath the illustration. But ultimately I want to tap on that layer and tap on fill layer. I'm basically adding a background underneath the illustrations. So I'll go ahead and insert what that image should look like. And the reason why I'm not merging that all together is because in the future, if I ever want to change the background color, I don't want to be stuck with a single color or we have to redo the pattern. That way I can just have the illustrations be on a transparent background. So for this step, I'm just choosing a cream white color. And again, it's super important for the pattern making process, but afterwards we can always delete it and change the background color like. And now with the duplicated layer, we're gonna go ahead and tap on it and tap on flatten. So all four layers will now be one layer. So I know this next step might seem tedious, but I'm basically going to now highlight those layers and then group them again. And then after I group them, I can easily duplicate it as well. So now I'm gonna go ahead and tap on the second group. So not the one on top, but the one underneath it. So this next step is super crucial. I wanna make sure that after I tap on the selection icon at the very bottom, I tap on snap. And for the settings, I need to make sure that magnetics and snapping is turned on. And this is going to just help us with this process of making the seamless patterns and being able to move it left to right. So after the settings are turned on, I'm going to use my Apple Pencil and move this image to the left hand side. And you'll notice that as you're doing this, it's going to snap in place when it hits that center point line. And I want to make sure it snaps until I can release. So essentially what we did is that we moved the image and made sure the right of the image is now on the left side as you can see here and then now i'm going to move the other layer over to the right hand side using the exact same step that i did for the first layer so after this step now you get to kind of identify and see where there is more negative space and if you want to change the elements so you'll notice here that i'm just going to go through my layers and start moving some elements around and then duplicating some of the illustrations resizing them and things like that so this might be a tedious process feel free to take as much time as you'd like but really Really what we're just doing is looking back at the overall piece and seeing what sections we can fill around the pattern. So you'll see here that I'm just adding new elements, adding smaller elements and resizing some just to fill the negative space that I see throughout this pattern. As I'm doing this, I also want to make sure I don't want to add anything that'll go off the canvas. So you'll notice that a lot of the things that I'm doing here is kind of just focused in the center point area. After all of the illustrations are filled and you feel good about the spacing and filling the negative space, we're now going to open up the layers tab and now we have to merge everything. So again, I don't want to merge the background layer. I just want to make sure I can merge all of the illustrations together. And what I'm going to do now with the background layers, I'm just going to delete them. Since they were split in half, I would need the background layer to be the full canvas again. So after the illustrations are merged, I'm going to add a new layer underneath the illustrations 
layers and then fill that layer. So after I have the two layers, I'm going to highlight them again and then group them and then swipe to the left to duplicate them. So now using the same process that we did earlier where we move the layers to the left and to the right, now we're going to move it to the top and the bottom. And just remember that you need to make sure the magnetics and snapping is turned on. So after you move the layers to the top of the canvas and then towards the bottom of the canvas, now we're going to identify and see if there's any negative space. And with the process, again, add new illustrations. You can draw them or duplicate the past illustrations. And I'm just going to move things around so that way some of the illustrations are not so crowded or super close to each other. And feel free to erase some of the illustrations, add new ones, and have fun with this process. Since I drew out all of these additional illustrations to fill the negative space on another layer, I'm going to make sure that I can merge all the layers onto one layer again. So after all of the illustrations are on one layer, I'm going to now add a new layer underneath that illustration layer to add my background layer. So all you have to do is just tap on that layer and tap on fill layer, and then you have your background layer. So again, I'm going to highlight those two layers and then group them together. And just as a safety, I went ahead and duplicated that layer and then just uncheck mark that check mark on the right hand side just to have it in case I don't like how this pattern came out. So now for the fun part to see how everything turned out, we're going to tap on the selection tool and at the very bottom, make sure that your snapping and magnetics is on and also make sure that it's not defaulted to the freeform. We want to make sure that it's on the uniform tool. So now I'm going to make this group layer smaller and just starting at the bottom right hand corner just dragging it and making it smaller until it snaps into the first box that you see on, on the left hand side and then afterwards we're going to open up the layers tab and then duplicate this layer and now we're just going to drag that layer over to the right hand side and then we're just going to do the same process again where we're going to duplicate that group layer and then now move it to the bottom and then duplicate it again and then move the last layer over to the left hand side. Yay! And you see how everything is lined up nicely and I'm just going to do a quick check and zoom in just to make sure and see how everything lined up and it looks pretty seamless to me. Yay! So after you're happy with it, feel free to change the background color because it's now a repeating pattern and you can use it for almost anything like tissue paper, gift wrap, cards, anything you'd like. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Yay, and there you have it. I hope you had so much fun creating seamless patterns with me using the Procreate app. Please comment below if you have any questions and what tutorial that I should do next. I am super grateful and happy that you were here and I cannot wait to see you next time. Happy lettering, happy creating, and I hope you have a really good week. Bye.